at that time, again, now the old KTM needs an oil change. I've been picking a few bits and pieces up. The AMX Superstore. The last time I done an oil change, I put in uh, Motor X. This time, nah. I'm going for what I like, mold Castro. This is a Power One T4 1050. Fully synthetic, um, but with added bonus, it's Castro. You know you're buying a quality oil with Castro. Um, I went to a local KTM shop and bought my oil filters. as AMX didn't have any, so that seemed ready to do. Um, so the bikes are just back for the shop where that's why it was running. So now. Anything else in there? Oh, aye. So now it's time to do the oil change. I'll get all my tools and make a start. So, I've not been doing a lot of late filming. Um, been busy at work. Shortage of staff, what with Covid and everything else, so the bike's been neglected a little bit. Never mind, just one of these things. So as normal, I'll well, change this cover has to come off. No, I'll just do it a quick, quick spin of these bolts and that should be it. Like that. And that comes off just like that. Mm -hmm. Put that wee collar back in again, the wee collar fell out of that one. So that's that side done. So, next, again, when you service and check your brake pads, check everything. Doesn't take long to do, but it ensures that you don't mess anything up. So, I'll get you a wee bit closer in here. So, when you're changing oil, always have a nice clean pan, so that when you empty it into to bottles, um, you can see if there's been any any crap in there. So, first of all, <coughs> slacking off the first drain bolt. Now, rather than letting it spill all over the place, Hold this up. I'll do it that way, and it'll splash all over the place. And it's running nice and easily. And of course, you have these wee dress filters on the end, which help. Let's plug in, I'll take the cap off the top, I'll stop it plugging as much, there we go, nice smooth run, that's better, so if you take the cap off, it'll run easier like that, so then what you need to do is clean that up, ready to put back in again, has a rubber o-ring there so as it seals, unless o-ring's damaged, you can use it again, if it is damaged, use a new one, and we'll let that trickle away and we'll do the same with the back one. Yes, slack. And again, just gently. Not much in this one, this is just the engine. Oh. There we go. You can put a wee bit of tin foil over your exhaust so it doesn't get oil in it, I just wipe it off. Now what's left on it will burn off anyway, I like the smell of burning oil. It's very very hot. And then, it's just a matter of taking off 
the uh, oil filter. So the oil filter should be easy enough. When you put these things on, you don't over tighten it because if you over tighten it, you end up bursting these bolts or stripping the threads. And that's something you just don't want to do. And normally, slacking that off, take the bolts out, and then this cover, usually tight. If you can't, oh, that's hot. Yeah, you pull it with your nail, it comes out. So here is a new KTM filter. proper KTM filter. The one that's in it is a K&N. To be honest, I don't think there's much difference. So we'll pull the K&N filter out. Pretty dirty. Ugh. And what we'll do is we'll go and have a cup of coffee and let all that crap drain out. You can also lean the bike over a wee bit if you want, just to help get that stuff to run out quicker. But as you can see, two sump bolts. The reason being this one drains the engine, there isn't much oil sits in the engine because it has a tank. So you fill your tank up with oil there's a pump, pumps it to the top of your engine and it runs down here. Um, through the bottom of your engine and back into this tank again so it circulates. So what it more or less means is you've got a glass here so you can check the level. You'll never ever overfill that or you'll never ever overfill your engine because it's the pump that supplies the engine. If you know what I mean. Anyway, a cup of coffee. Let it drip dry. So, time to put this all back together. And remember, oil filter, the whole end goes in. So just push that in and you'll feel it clip into place. It gives a click. Once your filter's in, put your cover on. Put your two screws in, line the cover up, push the cover into place, like that, so as it's seated in, and then crank up the two screws. Remember, don't overdo them. Last thing you want to do is damage that cover. And make sure it's held into place. And then a wee tighten up to what you think. Maybe a bit more than that. Like that. That's overly tight. It's in place, so it won't leak. Now, the same with these. Give the hole a wee clean, if you can. And then, You don't bump the gauze, it should just go in nice and easy. Like that. And same with the back one, make sure your gauze is nice and straight. Give it a wee clean just to get any drips off. Like that. Pop it in. 
and tighten up. And using your 15mm root socket, tighten them up till they stop, and then just a wee bit just to seal it. Don't overdo it, it won't slack enough. Just do it enough. Like that. Then, possibly, next best job will be getting rid of all this crap and tidying up before we fill the oil up. So, I'll do that next. So, now it's time to put the oil in. A little bit cast all one. So, some of you will be wondering why I've went from Motor X, which is the recommended oil, to the Castrol. Well, to be honest, I prefer Castrol oil. I've always used it on all my vehicles, bikes, cars, and I've never once had a weird problem in my engine. Not once using Castrol. I have with other lubricants, but certainly not with Castrol, so that's why I'm using Castrol now. Motor X, I don't even know who makes that oil. Um, I know that Castrol's made by BP, so at least you sort of know where it's, where it's coming from. But um, yeah, and the good thing with this bike if you drain it out properly and give it time to fully drain, oops, you'll get the four whole litres back into it, unless you spill it like me. Um, that's the tank filled up, so what I'll need to do now is run it, so as it fills up the engine, and then I'll get the rest of the four litres in. So, I'll pull that out just now. God. I didn't realise it was filling up that quick. Um, where's my cap? Stick the cap on. I'll run the engine. Yeah, that, not a spot in the ground. How lucky was that? Very lucky. So, that's how we look. Make sure the oil light goes out when we switch it on. And you'll hear it when it first starts up, you'll hear it ticking till the oil gets through the engine. Which means we can switch it off and add the rest of the engine oil. So off with the cover again. And with the funnel, whoops. Damn, we've got oil left in the funnel. And pour in the rest of the four litres. I'll just let that sit and drip for a minute. So it says in the manual that this bike takes about 3.6 or 3.8 litres. You can't really overfill it because it's got a tank. If it was filling up the engine, you could overfill it. But when it has a tank, it just puts into the engine what it needs through the pump. There we go. 
So you can't really overfill it. It's virtually impossible to overfill it. Unless you mean by overfilling it and it runs out of here like I did. But, um, yeah, no. And that's that. So, we'll put the cap back on. We'll give it another start up. And see what the oil level's sitting at. So, here we go again. Ignition on. Now you'll see the oil lights on there, you'll see that'll go really quick this time. Can I see it for the light? There we go. Watch this. That's because the engine's full. There's a wee bit in the bottom of the oil filter there but that's because I spilt it and it's run down under and down onto the oil filter it's not leaking thank goodness so that's it done so I'll take that for a run bring it back check the oil level make sure it's okay um yeah as I was saying you can get the whole of the four liters in which as you can see fills the pump the tank right up um and the oil changes, you know, they, they recommend, what was it, 15,000? I would never, ever, ever let a bike go that long with, without an oil change. Um, I think, personally, it does have fully synthetic oil in it. Fully synthetic oil is like man-made oil, and it'll last so much longer than mineral oil. Um, it probably lubes a wee bit better as well but it lasts so much longer and um, you'll easily last the 10,000 kilometers on the KTM with fully synthetic especially when it takes four liters um, some of the smaller engine bikes it maybe take two liters two and a half liters three liters um, probably because it's a smaller amount of oil doing the same job the oil will wear out it'll lose its viscosity quicker but the KTM, because you can put in four litres in that tank, you'll easily get the 10,000. Um, if you're wanting to safeguard it, you could do it every 8,000, I suppose. But 10,000, yep, I took that oil out. And the reason I changed it now at the 10,000 was I could hear a, a change, just a slight change in the engine noise, just a bit more clattery, a bit more noisy. And uh, I thought, hmm maybe needs an oil change so it's sitting at about 19,500 so I'll class this as a 20,000k oil change um, next year I'll see what it's like when it gets to about 18,000 if it gets that clattery noise I'll maybe change it so I'll have done 8,000k's but really you should get 10,000 out but I would never let it go to 15 I think 15 is just being crazy so anyway I'll get this cleaned up um, and that should be the KTM done. Uh, oh yeah, and I'll grease the chain as well. But that's a five minute job. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye.